It's actually quite interesting. Over the past year I've seen many comments and online posts suggesting that Linux Mint with its cinnamon desktop environment is the best choice for newcomers if they used to use Windows. But I've never quite understood why. Don't get me wrong, Linux Mint as well as Cinnamon are both really good choices and you probably will not regret using them either together or even separately. That being said, what I don't agree upon is the reasoning on why Linux Mint is supposed to be the best. I've been using Linux Mint as my sort of second monitor for the last couple of weeks and there are many things that I like about it, some things that I don't like about it and some things that are missing altogether. So let's talk about it, but first let me remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like and while you're down there why not also subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate your support and welcome to the community. Ok, so let's start off from the beginning. What is Linux Mint and what are the reasons on why it's being called out so often as being a Windows friendly operating system? First off, to no surprise, Cinnamon, the default desktop environment of Linux Mint, uses a traditional taskbar and start menu, which is essential for Windows users. Or so they think at least. One sort of problem that many seem to forget whenever they recommend a desktop environment to newcomers is familiarity. And not in a good way. See, many coming from Windows don't actually know what they really prefer since there are not that many options out there. There is essentially Windows with a taskbar and macOS with a dock and nothing in between. Why is that a problem in my opinion? Well first off, when something looks familiar, people often expect it to behave the same. A taskbar is a preference and is utilized by many desktop environments since its users prefer one. However, you should never assume that it works and behaves exactly the same. And that's the point. Don't just recommend a desktop environment because it has a taskbar and a start menu. This taskbar will behave different than the one they know and they might be thrown off by that. Their mindset has always been trained in a different direction. I just needed to get that out of my system because whenever I read something like that online, it really bothers me. Linux Mint has so many other things that make it awesome. So let's start off by first talking about the installation experience. Linux Mint installer is very straightforward. Choose a language and the keyboard layout, select if you want to install multimedia codecs to make sure that everything renders properly and choose the hard drive where it should be installed on. Alternatively, and especially for laptops, you can also encrypt your drive with a password, set a time zone and a user and that's it. In the user configuration, Mint also offers the option to encrypt your home directory, which is useful if you have several different user accounts on your system, which could potentially read out your personal files if they have elevated permissions. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, then you also automatically get to install the correct proprietary driver directly after the installation. And you don't even want to know how important that is for good usability. So yeah, the installation experience is really great. Right off the bat, Linux Mint looks a lot like Windows 10. It has a traditional taskbar, some quick settings and a calendar on the right, as well as some shortcuts and a start menu on the left, which has a sort of modernized Windows XP look. Everything's a bit chubby, if you know what I mean. I'm personally not a huge fan of categorizing applications by default, though you luckily can customize everything to your liking. In contrast to some other operating systems, you can customize the height, size of icons and their placement as well as move the taskbar itself to your personal preference. One thing that I personally don't like about Linux Mint are the default icons. While some of them look really nice, others are not so great. I mean come on, what do I do if I have several email programs installed? Mint also offers their own software store, which on Linux in general is the preferred way to get applications. By default, it also supports Flatpaks with its huge Flathub repository right out of the box. If you don't know what Flatpak is yet, then essentially all you have to know is that its packages work essentially on every Linux distribution and therefore is very attractive for software developers. And what can I really say about the store, except that it just works, while also being plain ugly. I'm sorry, but GNOME software is so much better. 
Besides some very minor details, Linux Mint looks really promising so far. So let's move on to something else that basically everyone uses almost every single day. The file manager. And not gonna lie, it's really easy to use. It has a clean interface with the most important shortcuts on the left. You can choose a preferred layout, can add or remove details in the preferences, add your own favorites if you want to, and you can even create files right within the directory. You might wonder why I bring that up, but you can't do that in GNOME for example. On top of that, you can enter a custom path just like on Windows and one more feature that is really useful is that you can launch the file manager with root privileges since it easily allows you to copy or open files in protected directories. On other distributions, you often have to use a terminal to do that or use it to start a privileged session. Very nice. Let's move on to the settings next. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, they take some time to get used to, but once you know them, it's not that hard to find something. Right here on the top, we can customize cinnamon and change the look of our mouse cursor, change the color and layout of buttons, as well as switch between different types of icons and swap out the experience as a whole. Linux Mint, similar to KDE Plasma, also allows you to download themes right from the settings. I wish the images could be enhanced though. Theoretically, with a bit of skill, you can even make Cinnamon look exactly like Windows. If you really want to do that, it's completely up to you. But there are so many different choices out there, I don't think that you want to use that particular theme. For the sakes of this video, I'll stick with a mint design for now. Moving on to the display settings, I think it should be noted that Linux Mint supports fractional scaling, aka values between 100 and 200%. This is important for special resolutions like 1440p, since on most operating systems 100% is actually optimized for 1080p. Be aware that fractional scaling is still experimental and it did bug out on me when I tried it in a virtual machine. The experience could be different on a normal system though. Now, I believe it's time to talk about some things that I don't like about Linux Mint. One of the most common problems that Mint, but also many other Linux distributions still have, is the lack of Wayland support. What is Wayland, you might ask? Well, it's a display protocol which handles the way how things get to your display. Linux Mint still uses the old X11 protocol, which renders all available screens as one big one. See, if you have for example two monitors with different refresh rates, then it often happens that the one with the higher refresh rate gets synced with the lower one, aka you don't get the advertised experience from it. And while I have criticized Wayland in the past, over the past year there have been many quality of life improvements, especially with the influence by Valve and the distros which now shape with it by default. Overall, it really has become a better experience, but some issues still do persist. I think the most common problem that I was confronted with when using Mint were the settings. I mean, like I said, if you know them, then they are fine, but somehow it still feels a lot worse than other desktop environments. But there is a good side to it as well. Cinnamon or Linux Mint, I'm not sure how far they customized it, also offer many settings which other desktop environments don't. Mouse acceleration for example. One more minor detail that I want to bring up, because I like pointing things out is, try to restart the PC. Come on. No, not log out. I meant restart. Alright, this heavily depends on how you consume information and connect the dots. But if you didn't shut down the system yet, do some updates and it asks you for a reboot, I promise you that at least some will get confused. <laughs> you know, Linux Mint and Cinnamon often strike me as a sort of, if you know, you know feeling. B but whatever. Oh, and another funny side note. Do you remember when, I think it was Windows 10, after all the Windows 7 users moved over and they couldn't add shortcuts to the desktop from the start menu? Well, you can't do that either here. Alright? But you can at least add them to the taskbar or also called panel. Oh, and by the way, if you feel like the desktop looks a bit weird, don't worry, we can adjust the grid to our liking and also change the way how we sort icons, since by default they get arranged automatically. I'm not quite sure why they chose to integrate this by default, but there is a possibility that actually more people use this feature than assumed. 
pretty interesting actually. So yeah, overall Linux Mint is a really good operating system regardless from where you are coming from. It comes with a few pre-installed apps, but overall looks in the way of keeping the operating system as light as possible. Its Ubuntu base allows you to access a wide range of different repositories with lots of applications and is generally easy to use. I personally wouldn't recommend Linux Mint for a random newcomer, but not for the reasons that you might think. I believe it's best if people experience something that is completely different from Windows. You know, something like GNOME for example. Not because GNOME is great or anything, but because they get to know their preferences. Linux Mint is easily one of the best distributions out there, but it doesn't deserve the judgment that it doesn't behave like Windows. As I say with all Linux distributions and desktop environments, choose what you like, but don't expect it to work like something you know, because only then you can truly enjoy the experience. And that's where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and why not also subscribe to the channel. If you already liked this video, then why not continue watching another one? Couldn't hurt. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.